Hello, and welcome back to Math 100. Today, we are going to study section 3.3, all right? Now, in the first two sections, we were assuming that there was a one-time deposit made in the uh, bank account, and then we studied uh, how that money grows using compound interest. So today, we'll be talking about a series of equal payments, such as, you know, when you save for retirement or when you save up money every month or you set aside money every month or every quarter to, uh, to be used for something in the future. So that's the big difference. And of course, because you have many payments now or many deposits, the uh, math part may get a little complicated. But uh, rest assured, you do not have to memorize this complicated formula that will appear in this section. Now, you may have to use that formula a couple of times on, uh, as you do your homework, but you would not be required to memorize that for your test or for your final. Okay, so just make sure that you understand that. Do not be too intimidated by, by what you see. Okay, now with that, I will get started on section 3.3. Section 3.3 is entitled Savings, Oops. Savings and Annuities. Now, what in the world is an annuity? So if you have a full-time job and if you have a retirement account or a pension plan or something, you may be familiar with an annuity. And an annuity is a, um, a method of uh, saving up a certain amount of money typically the same amount of money every month or every quarter, so that in the end, such as when you retire or you know, 10 years from now or whatever, you will have a certain amount of money to live on. And so that's what savings are. And, and that's the kind of the annuity is a type of savings when this happens. Now, this whole thing okay, is based on adding up the amount of money, but it's a little different because uh, when you add up many deposits made at different points in time, some of them will earn more interest than others, right? And in fact, they're all different because they will be uh, earning the um, uh, interest for a different period, or different periods of time. Okay, an annuity, as I said, is a, uh, uh, in, uh, is a savings plan in which you deposit a certain amount of money regularly to save up for something in the future. The value or the worth of money is, and this is probably the most important concept in chapter three, is time sensitive, okay? The value of money is time sensitive due to the interest it earns, okay? In other words, if the money sits in a bank or in an investment, plan. It has the uh, earning power. Okay, So if you put your money under the mattress or somewhere in the jar in your room or something, it's not going to grow. But if you have money, and for a long pe period of time especially, the interest is going to be significant. And so that's what um, drives all these investment plans and retirement accounts all over the world. Okay, so let's do uh, an example to illustrate what I mean by that. Uh, it'll be nice for me to use a straight line here. So let's see if I can draw a straight line. There you go, that's our straight line. And this represents uh, time, okay? So this is uh, the representation of a time moving forward. Suppose you deposit $1,000 once a year for 10 years at 5% annually. Okay, so what does it mean? Uh, right now, this is year zero. And so today you deposit interest. Uh, sorry, today you deposit $1,000. Okay, now 10 years from now, we will try to figure out how much money you will have. Okay, so this is in years. All right, so you deposit $1,000 today. How much is it going to worth 10 years from now? Okay, well, it's simple. If it's 5% annually, 1.05 raised to the 10th power, right? No problem here. We already know how to calculate this because we studied section uh, 3.1. The second deposit is going to be placed right here after one year. Okay, remember you're uh, saving up or you're depositing $1,000 once a year. This $1,000 is not going to earn interest for nine, uh, 10 years, but only for nine years, right? And how about the one 
and in the second or uh, the uh, uh, two years from now, that third deposit is going to earn interest for eight years because uh, this is two years from now, and then you will be uh, figuring out how much you have uh, 10 years from now. That's a period of eight years. So the question is, how do you add up all the amount here? This is where you calculate the total. Okay, In other words, you have to add this amount, this amount, this amount, and then what? Uh, seven more payments, all uh, earning interest for uh, for different periods of time and add them up, right? So the answer is going to be this plus this plus this plus what? A thousand times 1.05 raised to the seventh power and then to the sixth power and then to the fifth power and so on. That turns out to be really complicated, right? Well, it turns out in uh, um, slightly more advanced mathematics, like in college algebra, you learn to um, add up these things. This is called the series. And in particular, when these numbers change by one like this, this is called a geometric series. All right, so some smart people have discovered how to calculate these things. And that leads us to the formula, which I am not going to try to develop this because this der derivation is going to be uh, quite a more complicated thing. It's, it's a beyond the scope of this course, okay? But if you are to study geometric series, starting at this and it ends with uh, you know, uh, the last term, then you can calculate and derive this formula. Uh, and by the way, this is going to be a sort of an intimidating formula. You do not have to memorize this, but you do need to use this a couple of times on your, as you do your homework. All right, so, so we have a new symbol here. D is the, the, the amount of each deposit. Okay, so if it's a monthly deposit or annual deposit, it's the same amount every single time. D is the amount of regular deposit. And T is, of course, the number of years, as before. And R is the um, annual percentage rate, as before. And K is the uh, number of compounding periods per year, as before. OK, so everything else is the same except for this new D. And then I am going to give you the uh, amount, which we will call ST. That's a sum of all of these different payments after T years. T years, okay? How much money are you going to have? So here's the answer to this question. If you apply this concept of geometric series, uh, what you get as a sum is D times, okay? And now this is gonna be a big fraction. One plus R over K. Now remember R over K plus one looks familiar, right? Because that's what you used before. And then you raise it to the Another familiar thing, KT. Now, this, this whole expression appeared before in uh, section one. But uh, because you have a, a series of payments now, the formula would look quite different. You subtract one from this, and then you divide it by the rate per period, which is R over K. Did I say this looks complicated? Yeah, it does, okay? But again, the good thing is you do not have to memorize this. And when you do this calculation, you know, try to do this first because this appears twice, okay? And you should do this part first because this is the most complicated part. It will take uh, more time. And you have to pay close attention to the order of operations. Uh, and I will show you how to do that. Now, remember R over K, which appears twice here is the rate per period. And you also assume that um, if, you're depositing the month annually, then we assume that compounding is happening annually. If you are depositing uh, uh, your money monthly, then we assume K is 12, you know, every month. Okay. Uh, so know what each variable represents, okay, and learn how to use a scientific calculator for um, calculation like this. Okay, uh, here's my first example. Let's say you can save up $100 every month for five years at 6% compounded monthly. How much are you going to get? How much interest would you earn in the five year period? And how much is your total um, uh, uh, sum or the amount in the future? Okay, so let's go ahead and identify each of these numbers. D, the deposit is the $100 that's given. And you're depositing every month and it is explicitly uh, stated that the compounding is monthly, so K must be 12. Uh, what's R? 
the rate is given as 6%, that's 0 0.06, and T is five years. Right, so this is what you know. What we need to find is the sum after <clears throat> five years. So it's S sub five that we are looking for. It's 100 times, now this is the tricky part. And by the way, um, I'm going to go ahead and write down the whole thing first. One plus R over K, right? So it turns out, I mean, 6% compounded monthly means 0.5% compounded every month. Right? And then you raise it to the power of what? Well, it's 12 months for five years. It's the 60 months, right? This, remember that exponent is the total number of um, compounding periods. But what's new here is that you have to subtract one from it. And this whole thing has to be divided by that rate per period, which is 0 0.06 divided by 12. Now, this is uh, not an ugly terrible calculation because 0 0.06 over 12 is a pretty nice number. Okay, so this is going to be 100 times one. Let's go ahead and write down as 1.005. That's inside the parentheses. 60th power minus one all over 0 0.005. What did I say you should calculate first? You should calculate for first this part. Okay, now I'm going to write down the answer here first. And then I will uh, tell you how to, you know, how to do uh, more, uh, how to do this calculation in more detail. The answer turns out to be six thousand nine hundred seventy-seven cents and zero zero. Okay, that zero zero just happens to be. Uh, there is no explanation for it. It just happens to be a coincidence. Okay. Now the operation on the calculator. This is what I would do. 0 0.06 divided by twelve. Right? And that's going to give you 0 0.005. And then I would add one to it. Okay, so I'm going to do this part first. These are the keys I'm entering. Okay, and this is what the calculator will show. And add one to it. And then at that point, your calculator, calculator will show you 0 1.005. And you raise it to the, or maybe for my calculator uh, illustration, I will enter x to the y or the caret key and equals and, um, oh, sorry, 60. Okay, now I don't know what the answer is, but whatever it is, it's going to be 1.005 raised to the 60th power. Okay, and once I do that, you subtract one from it. Okay, whatever it is. And then I will divide it by 0.005 and then equal sign. And that, whatever this is, is going to give you this part, okay? So let me show you how I will do that. And then I will multiply that result by 100 to get, you, get my answer. Okay, so I said, um, you know, 0 0.06 divided by 12, that's 0 0.005, add one to it, plus one equals, okay, that's 0 1.005. That is the value inside of these parentheses. And then you raise it to the power of 60 and you get this number, which I didn't write down because I did not know what that number is, right? It's usually a, a complicated decimal. And then I subtract one from it. Okay, now make sure you hit enter or the equal sign here because that is your numerator. That is the top part of your fraction. And you do need to know that before you do the division by 0 0.005, okay? So divide it by 0 0.005. This is going to give you a big number, 69.77 something. And then you multiply this by the amount of your equal and regular payment. And that's $100 in this problem. And that will give you the answer, 6977.00. Okay, so if I went too fast, you may want to repeat and you watch this again. Uh, you should be able to calculate this on your scientific calculator. Okay. Now let's go to the uh, second page. All right, on the top of the second page, I'm going to help you fill out, uh, fill in a couple of blanks. Remember R over K is what? Okay, this happens twice in this formula, rate per period. Really, that's what we need, okay? Regardless of what that uh, R is, we don't, I mean, we do use R, but we don't use that rate R by itself. We always divide it by K, the number of periods per year. Okay, and KT is your exponent, and that is the same as before. It is the total number of compounding 
you don't have to have the word compounding uh, periods. It's a total number of periods over which the money is going to be invested. Okay, now do not round your numbers. So this is an issue with some students. If they say 0.3333, for instance, they just round to 0.3. Well, that's a big uh, an error. It's going to cause a big error. And your answer in the end may be different by thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars. Okay, so do not round your numbers. Use a memory function or write down lots of digits if you are doing this manually. So that's something to remember. All right, the next um, couple of examples, you can use this practice. And in fact, um, I'm going to go into the second um, part of the segment of this video for this lesson. And you may wanna look at this problem here and see if you can do that before you start on part two of this video.